This is Dave Palumbo with RxMuscle.com in the Iron Asylum with Kevin Jordan. We are here in the off season, training a little chest at Bev Francis Powerhouse Gym in Syos at New York. Kevin, welcome back. What's going on, Dave? Thanks for having me again. Always a pleasure. Well, I see you're pushing some maximum weights here at the gym. 160 pound dumbbells like they're a piece of cake. Has chest always been a good body part for you? Strong body part? Um, it's it's one of those body parts that I'm strong at, but I mean, as far as development, I still need you know tons of development there. So I'm still a work in progress. I feel like as far as my chest, but uh, as far as like strength wise, I'm pretty strong. Uh, I don't know if I really proved that in that video, <laughs> but um. I feel like it's, it's a strong body part, but it's definitely another one that I, I still need to work on and get bigger, stronger, because my shoulders are, are uh, pretty developed. Yeah, is that hard, I was going to say, because I, I know a lot of guys with big delts have trouble training their chest because the delts tend to dominate in the bench press. So you might be really strong, but you're not really necessarily working the pec muscles the way you think you might be working them. Exactly. So for me, I mean, um, I just I took a, a, a few years break from actually benching because of that reason, and uh, I've adopted some principles like pre-exhausting my chest, and uh, I think that's that's worked great so far, but it still needs, you know, a lot more work, so it's just going to be one of those things, you know, like I said, it's going to be a work in progress. Yeah, I, I had to go back, when I in my own training, I had to go back to the drawing board and almost, like, start over again with, like, 135 and just really, like, rehearse and teach my pecs how to, like, actually work and, and move the weight, because I was so used to using, you know, rolling my shoulders forward, you know, to use the delts. Yeah, I agree, I agree. I mean, especially if you're a former athlete, you know, I played football before, and it's all about just moving the weight, you know. So uh, I definitely agree with that. It's one of those things, you know, you just got to, like you said, start over from the drawing board, see what works best for you, and figure it out. Well, I mean, you, uh, you're you inclined benching 405 for reps, with, which in Bev Francis' gym is probably like more like 430 for reps because the weights are heavy here. And I know that's a very impressive lift. Uh, I mean, and and you're doing it with you know with control. Uh, is is that the? Have you ever been injured? Number one, and 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 is has control always been a part of your your workouts? No, but it's it's funny you mentioned that about the uh, the weights because those weights were heavy as hell. I mean, honestly, back home I usually do four oh five for uh, eight to ten at the end of my uh, sets without an ease. I mean, I got that thing I think for like four or five, but. The control is always a, a pretty big issue. I try to make sure, you know, I'm, I'm feeling chest. Otherwise, you know, I'm just wasting my time. I'm just moving the weight around. Sure. So um, that's definitely a big component anytime I do any lift. You know, uh, when we come over to the cable crossovers, I, I see a lot of guys using different form with that. Uh, you seem to have, like, a, more of a limited range of motion. Is is that to make sure ensure that you're using all pack and that you're not just, you know, overextending because I see a lot of guys come all the way up with the weights and, I, and it, almost the tension comes off your pecs at that point. Exactly. For me, it's more about keeping uh, tension on the muscle. But like you said, if, if I feel like when I come up really high like that, I'm I'm hitting more front delt. So I like to keep the uh, range of motion pretty short, keep the tension on the chest, and just try to pump as much blood in there as possible. So it's one of those movements I usually do at the, uh, the end of my workouts to just kind of stimulate more muscle and pump more blood in there. How long do your chest workouts usually take? Because, you know, obviously we, we've edited these videos down, but, I mean, it seems like your your pec workout is not super long and it's not doesn't entail a lot of sets. No, I mean, I usually, I fly. I mean, my workouts are usually 45, 45 minutes to an hour. I have a pretty busy uh, work schedule. I'm usually training uh, anywhere from 10 to 12 clients a day, so... It gets a little hectic with that, so I like to uh, try to maximize my time. I mean, I usually, I'm in and out. I do uh, maybe four or five exercises, four sets. Now, I, I realize that you do uh, you do train so many people, and it, and it is hard. Obviously, you're trying to grow and add size to your body. Uh, do you depend on a lot of shakes for your nutrition? Um, right now, I'll do maybe four whole meals, four shakes. Or not four, but four whole meals and three shakes. So I just I try to work those in, but a lot of my clients they understand, and I usually if I'm eating, you know, they'll just warm up on the uh, elliptical or treadmill for a little longer. So uh, off season, I try to be a little a little lenient as far as getting the whole food in, but pre contest, no one really cares. They know, you know, what's at stake. So I'm able to get all my meals in. Uh, do you like to use any kind of pre workout before you go into the gym uh, to to get you going? Uh, I love using Gats pre workout, the uh, Nitroflex. It's uh, 
in my opinion, one of the better products on the market. Um, I wasn't a big uh, pre-workout guy before, but with this one, it's real smooth. It's easy going. I don't feel like I'm, I'm jittery, you know, but I, I feel stronger every time I use it because it has a uh, test booster in it. So I really, uh, I really enjoyed the product, and it's one I swear by. I just realized you're wearing the shirt. That, that was a, a nice uh, shameless plug I gave you there. <laughs> so I now, appreciate it. I know you, I've been asking you this question over the last probably eight months now every time I see you, and you haven't really given me a, a solid answer. Have you decided on what you might want to do this year as far as competitions go? Honestly, it's it's completely up to my trainer. I mean, I was dead set on doing the USAs, but uh, Chad's somebody that I really look up to, you know, and if he thinks, you know, I should wait and grow a little more, then that's what I'm going to do. Um, uh, like I said, I want to get on stage as soon as possible. I feel like after last year, I have a lot to prove. You know, to not only myself, but to, you know, others in the sport. So, uh, I'm going to talk with him either tonight or tomorrow and figure it out from there. But I mean, right now I'm 13 weeks out. So if we started, it would be, uh, it's usually 12 weeks out and we would probably start, uh, next Monday. I usually like to start on Mondays. What but, would that be for the North American championships? Yeah. That would be for North Americans. Otherwise, it would be nationals. But I mean, I'm definitely going to be on stage at, at some point this year. All so, right. Well, best of luck to you. For now, though, we're out of time. I'm Dave Palumbo with Kevin Jordan in the Iron Asylum.